Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. So in today's video, we are going to be continuing the Daikin VRVS install series, but it's going to be a really easy video today. We're really just going to be focused on setting up your nav controller as the master. And if you accidentally set up the wrong nav controller as the master, I'm also going to show you how to change the master controller on a Daikin VRVS system. You guys should be a pretty short video, nice and easy, focused not too much detail or discussion involved. So you guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. Really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, let's jump right in. Now, of course, we've been saying this throughout the series, you guys, but this is not a factory authorized training. This is not a training of any kind. This is just me sharing some information with you guys, the meat and potatoes, most important things to consider and look out for when designing and installing and firing off VRV equipment. Uh, really just from experience, from the installation and operation manuals, taking tidbits out of there. And then of course, taking some of the conversations and discussions from past trainings that I have had with contractors in person to give you guys, you know, the smoothest install possible, answer your guys' questions on the fly so that you aren't stuck when you're out there on the job site and you need some immediate support. So this is just reference material supplemental to the installation and operation manuals. You should be reading those. Always RTFM. We talk about that a lot on this channel. This is just additional help. All right, so in today's video, you guys, we're really just gonna be doing two things. When you complete the test operation, so in the last video, we went through the whole process of test operation, why it's needed, uh, how it works, et cetera, et cetera. Once that completes and the outer unit shuts back down and the navs turn back off, the very next thing you're going to need to do to operate the equipment is set a master. If you don't set a master and you just turn on all the navs, they did the test in cooling. So if you just simply turn them on and you don't change the mode, you only change the set point, the outdoor unit doesn't know who the boss is. So the outdoor unit will never turn on. I've had a few different jobs go down like this in the summertime, especially in my market, because that's when we cool is in the summer. We're cold in the winter in Seattle. So we always naturally change the thermostats to heat. So then it's not a problem. So in the summer, when guys just see cooling as the mode out of test, they think, great, I'm just going to turn it on, set the set point down to 67, 68, whatever, and start operating the equipment. Nothing turns on and they call and they're like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, hey, did you set a master? And they're like, what? What master? So if you look at the nav controller at the top of the nav, it will say master controlled. It will be an icon that is blinking at the top of the nav controller. And all the nav controllers on your VRVS system will be blinking the same icon, master controlled. I stress controlled because it ends with an ED and it's very fine print. So if you are hard at seeing and you can't see the script, you might think that it says master controller. So that can get a little confusing, but it does say master controlled. So what you're going to do is you're going to walk up to the nav controller, the thermostat that you want to set as the master. Now we've talked about how the nav controller works in several videos. I'll put a card in the corner for my entire nav controller playlist that walks you through in immense detail, everything you could need to know about the nav controller. But just for this video here, the way that the master works is the master nav controller picks the mode. Everybody else follows that mode. Everyone gets their own on off. Everyone gets their own fan speed. Everyone gets their own set point, but the master picks the mode. So if the master wants heat, everybody goes to heat automatically. And if the master wants cooling, everyone goes to cooling automatically. Regardless of how you feel about that, again, my nav controller playlist, I go into great detail and discussion about the whys and the hows and the pros and the cons. And I answer a lot of your questions there, and that's not for today's video. But that is how the master works, regardless of how you feel about it. So when you are selecting the master controller, ideally on a home, on a residential application, you want to select 
the main zone. Usually on a home, there's a big air handler that serves most of the home. And then there's a couple of small ductless style wall mounts or cassettes, or maybe a smaller ducted unit that serves just the master suite or whatever. You usually pick the main zone of the house as the master. What zone is most occupied by the tenant? What room is the most important to the homeowner? That sort of thing. Figure out which one that is, walk up to that nav controller, and then here's how you set the master. To set the master, you simply press any button on the nav controller to illuminate the backlight. With the backlight illuminated, you simply press the mode button one time. When you do this, that blinking master controlled icon at the top will disappear. And now you have no blinking master controlled icon at the top of that nav controller. All of the other nav controllers will go to a solid icon that says master controlled. And now you have set the master. Only the master can pick the mode. All of your other nav controllers can only pick that same mode or fan mode. What's really cool if you want to punish your kids, if you have individual inner units in every room of the house and your kids are misbehaving, put the master into fan mode because then all the others are stuck in fan mode and now your kids can't have heating or cooling. Kind of a nerdy joke, I know, because now you're also suffering, but I digress. So let's say you accidentally or intentionally set the wrong nav controller up as the master. To change which nav controller is the master, you need to first find the master. So walk around the job site and find which nav controller has a blank screen at the top. That's your master. This time, press any button to illuminate that backlight just like you did before, but press and hold the mode button down until that blinking master controlled icon reappears on the nav controller. What you've done is you've reset the master on all the nav controllers for that system. And so now you walk around to whatever nav controller you do want set up as the master and do the same step as before the first time when we talked about it, illuminate the backlight, press the mode button one time, and now that is your new master. And at any point in time, you can walk around your house and see which one's the master because if I walk up to a nav controller and it says master controlled at the top, and it's a solid icon, that means it's not the master. It's being master controlled. I need to go to a different nav, look for the blank icon, no icon at the top, top of the screen will be blank, no master controlled, and then I know I'm at the master. So I hope that this information has been helpful. That's all there is to it. There is no special magic behind it. All we're doing is just moving the master, and again, all the master does is pick the mode. For most applications, like a residential home, like my house, I have a unit in my garage. I have a unit in the attic that serves the upstairs. So I have a thermostat at the top of my stairs in the hallway. And then I have another unit in my attic that ties into the trunk of ductwork that serves the downstairs. So I have a thermostat downstairs in the hallway. And pretty much I leave my house alone all the time with the exception of the shoulder season. In the shoulder season, as we go from a dominant heating mode in my market to a dominant cooling mode in my market, you know, in the morning I want a little bit of heat. In the afternoon, the upstairs is getting toasty enough that I would like my stat to be in auto to go to cooling. So I will move the master from the downstairs thermostat up to the upstairs. So that way in that spring shoulder season, my upstairs can drive the mode of operation. And then again in the fall, October-ish, maybe early November, depending on the year, as the downstairs becomes the more dominant load of my house, I will move my master back to downstairs. And really master is only going to be relevant if you know, you're looking for that auto mode control, or if you're changing your mode a lot in the home, then you may need to move that from upstairs to downstairs like I do, or maybe you just wanna play, play around with it a little bit just to see you know, what's easiest for you from a controls perspective. Everybody's different, everyone has their own preference. But for the most part, that is pretty much the only thing I do with my controllers. I leave my house at pretty much the same set point year round, so it doesn't really become an issue which one's the master for me with the exception of maybe that one week in the spring or that one week in the fall but other than that it's 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 okay my house isn't big enough to the point where i need heating and cooling at the same time or anything like that the vrvs cannot heat and cool at the same time so it is not a problem for me but i digress i hope you guys enjoy today's video 
If you guys have any questions at all, put them in the comments below. I read through all your guys' comments. I do my best to answer all of your guys' questions as well. There are no bad questions, you guys. You're all my sponges. We're all one big happy family. We're just trying to learn this stuff together. So don't hesitate. Put your questions in the comments below, you guys. And if you enjoyed today's video, if you've been enjoying this series, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you all have an awesome day.